Hello, and welcome to an introductory video about my classes on The Artist Way. This has been a book that has come up many times over the last few years. So I decided to facilitate a class in which we would explore what Julia Cameron has to offer. The main tenets of her philosophy are um, morning pages, which is three pages every single morning by hand, an artist date in which you go on a pre-planned date by yourself to nurture your artist, your inner child artist, and also a variety of tasks. Now, over the next seven weeks, starting next week, there will be seven classes of six weeks of intensive writing. So we'll have the introductory class on, depending whether you're doing it in person or online, it'll be September 9th for online, September 12th for in-person. We'll just get warmed up, get started do some writing about our approach to the artist's way, create our own contract. She has one written in there, but I think it's much more powerful to do one that you write yourself and decide on how you're going to tackle these things. She is strong in her conviction of what works. However, it is her program and you need to choose for yourself what you're going to commit to and what is the best approach for you. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with her program. Many people, she quotes in there, millions of people have used it to better their creative life. However, again, I am a firm believer that no program is going to work for everyone all the time. If you were one person out of a million that it, you needed a different or a tweaked approach, then there's absolutely no reason why you would not choose that. So, Starting next week, creating one's own contract of what you're going to do for the next six weeks. You may have to tweak it meantime, but it's always good to start out with a strong game plan. Then over the following six weeks, every week, reading two chapters. Actually, she has this as a 12-week program. Due to my schedule and other considerations, we're doing it as a six-week program. So it'll be two chapters a week. That's why I had a summer reading program where we kind of laced through it one chapter a week over the 12 weeks of summer. But if you didn't do that, that's fine. You can still tackle two chapters a week. There is an audiobook version of it, or you can skim through it. It's not a one-time deal. As a creative person, as a person, creativity will last a lifetime. It's not that you get everything done today, next week, or in six weeks. It's that you create an approach that works for you where you're feeling like you're fully engaged and taking up the tasks that come to you. Now, life is exhausting. It's overwhelming. It's chaotic. It's unpredictable. It's not about doing things as much as being there. M.C. Richards says, all arts are apprenticeship. The real art is our life. So if you're feeling any hesitancy, remember that this is about becoming a creative person, not a creative doing something, not doing something to become the creative person that gives you the right to exist. You have the right to exist even without doing anything. Your whole body is creating every second of the day. It's creating this life force, not creating it, but it's it's the, the vessel for this life force. You don't have to do anything. If you just sit and breathe, that is a creative act. So cut yourself some slack. Think about this six weeks of commitment as a gift to yourself of just generating some energy around that desire to create. It's a mysterious thing if it were, I mean, AI can't even pull it together and be like, hey, this is creativity. We've got it right now. It's a mysterious thing that you want to participate in. That is what that urge is. Let's participate. So starting next week, September 9th, 2024 online, September 12th, 2024 in person, or if you're watching these videos anytime you like, we're going to create our own contract. What do we want to do for six weeks in order to um, energize and enliven our own creative life? Her chapter, every chapter starts with the term 
recovering. So you're recovering a sense of power or recovering a sense of identity. It's all about recovering the creative spirit. So what do you want to do in these six weeks to give yourself the best chance possible of recovering something in your innate self that will help you enjoy more creativity? Now, I want to share with you something that uh, one of her tasks was about meeting your monsters and talking to them, things in the past that may have kept you down. I did this in my morning pages, almost like without even remembering that it was a task. But after I was finished, I was like, oh my goodness, I did one of the tasks that's coming up. Um, and also a note on the tasks. She has 10 for every chapter. So since we're going through this in six weeks, that's going to be 20 different tasks. It's a lot. So you're not going to do every single task. Again, it's a lifelong process. The book, you can revisit it again and again, but you're going to choose one or two or three tasks, whatever your time allows. And she does recommend choosing tasks that you really want to do and the ones you really don't want to do. So I remember reading about this monster thing. I was like, I don't really want to do that, but I must have wanted to because I jumped right into it. So I'm going to read this just to share with you what it might look like to inspire you, hopefully to do it for yourself and to see it. I haven't read it over many times, so maybe it might be embarrassing for me. So um, you don't need to show other people what you write, but I wanted to do it in order to encourage you and hope that you will again participate at the best level that makes you feel energized and have access to your creative spirit, which is your right after all. Okay, so what do you mean I'm not successful, said the wayward waif. I thought I'm doing, well, not too bad. Look at you, said the monster, the sinicidal retchner, which is a scientific name after all. The image of health, well-rested or at least prioritizing rest, socially, emotionally powerful, or at least tuned in to your own being, full of wisdom. So some say, well, if so, why are you not at the top of the world, king of the hill or queen as the case may be? Why are your shouts not louder than the teeming thrall of noise out there? The little waif looked like she might cry. He was right after all. She had not risen to the status of Jesus Christ superstar as her mom might have phrased it. She still had met the page with the sum panache, as always, and yet it was still not connected to the inner workings of the great machine of traditional publishing, which, as one person had revealed to her over two decades ago, ran as smoothly as a wagon with concrete square block wheels. The thing that really worried her, the little waif in the thin black dress and the big hollow eyes and dirty wispy hair, was that for all her wins, she still felt this black smear of shame, this tendency to run, not walk, but to run into the arms of shamers like this, not for a hug, but to propel them into an even greater beating. I'm here, I'm yours, she found a part of herself saying. This sabotaging part was not shy, though it was cunning. Almost no one else knew it was there. And yet it was persnickety and the waif knew she would be better off drawing it out into the open. The weirdo monster's question was the perfect opportunity. She stood up from her dust colored rock, the one teetering on a precipice filled with mealy worms and large eyed kangaroo, large eyed kangaroo rats looking for their shoelaces, God knows why. She was much taller than you might've expected and the monster thing had to look up to her now to see her dark eyes. Why had he thought they were full of fear? They looked full of, what was that, weariness? Was he boring her? Also the dress he thought was tattered was finely woven with very clear and intricate lace patterns that gave it this gauzy look. And it really was the black of the eternally scary pit. It, and really, it wasn't the black of the eternally scary pit, but the black of a velvet night sky right before the stars burst through the milky, <laughs> sorry, right before the stars burst through and the milky moon rises. The waif looked down at now into his confused eyes. What do you mean, she said? Why am I not more successful? See this? She lifted a pointer finger and his eyes followed it, even as it lowered its tip into the middle of his forehead. 
This mare fingertip has the power to knock you over or lift you up. He could hardly believe his ears. His bulk was not one to be trifled with. She poked him on the nose. How had she gotten that fingertip from his forehead to his nose? She had, he, she had not, he had not even seen her move. I named thee Sparrowhawk, she said, pressing hard on his nose, but not in a mean way, just in a way that said, I mean business. Her eyes were fierce and yet gentle at the same time, and she turned and strode away without a backward glance. Where was she going? He was not done with her. Was he? What had he been doing anyway? He let his bulk sink into the earth. He'd been asking her something, something important. But she, had she really been too busy of her full life to give him the time of day? Imagine that, somebody so full of their own well, fullness. They didn't even have time for his silly, uh, he meant uh, important questions. He saw her glance back over her shoulders. Was that, was she blowing him a kiss? <laughs> and that was the end of my task. So again, this task was to tackle a monster, something that was getting you down. And the first line was, what do you mean I'm not successful? There's a, you know, that was a fear that had come up in me, um, not a new one. So that is how my task unfolded. Your task will unfold a completely different way, but I hope that it might be the same transformation I felt during writing that, that no longer does the monster, the sinusoidal retchner, have dominion over you, but you gain some mastery over it just through your creativity, your imagination, and your willingness. All right. So again, this is the beginning of September. Next week begins the focus on your own way using the book, The Artist's Way. I hope you will join me either in class or on your own. And so do take care, take care of yourself. Make sure you rest. The race is a long one. I read something about turtles today. And remember, turtles get there because they're slow but steady. It's okay to go at your own pace.